Hey there everyone, Hatesh here. Do you like maths? Do you like crypto? Do you like random number? This is all what we're going to talk in this video. This is going to be a fun exercise. And let me give you a little bit perspective, fictitious perspective, of course. Let's just say you have a goal in mind that I want to create an API. If anybody hits my API, I will return him a number between one and six because you want to give a universal resource that if anybody is making a dice game, he should be just served through my API. Let's just say this is a fictitious scenario, but this is it. So the first goal is to learn how we can generate number between one and six randomly, always randomly. And there should be some surety about the randomness. And also on the second part, how we're gonna learn how to build API, that's gonna be a later part of this course. So let's go ahead and start that because random numbers are the most confusing topic for beginners and it is, it is very confusing. Let's go ahead and explore that. So we're gonna create a new folder. Let's go ahead and do that. This one is 05, quite far into the series so far. And we're gonna call this one as my maths. And yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and create a new file into this one. And we'll call this one as obviously main.go. Open that up into the integrated terminal, just like always. Let's go ahead and say that I want to have this package initialized and calling it as my math. That's fine. Okay. Now into this one, we obviously know that how this goes up. We have seen this so many times. Should be a second nature to you now that to go ahead and write at least this much of code. And let's go ahead and put up a welcome message for ourselves. Welcome to maths. Come on in Golang. Yeah, that sounds reasonable message. Okay. Now, the first thing is, before we go ahead and move on to this, I'm pretty sure some of you have already figured this out, but let me just reiterate this, that the conversion or the type is very important in the Golang itself. So for example, if I go ahead and say that this is my number one, and this is of type integer, and let's just say I give it a value of two, and I go ahead and design another number, which is going to be var my number two and I go ahead and say this number is going to be a float 64 and I go ahead and say that you get a value of maybe four you don't need to precisely say 4.0 the four still will be treated as same like this and that's fine now if you go ahead and try to say that I want to go ahead and print out these two numbers so I'm going to go ahead and say the sum is and there we go and we try to go ahead and say that, hey, I want to go ahead and take this number one and I want to add the number two to it. You might have seen that automatically it just converts it into it. Yes, there is also a way to wrap this up around integer. But if you go ahead and try to do this uh, like that way, it is not allowed for you. It is going to give you error for this one that, hey, uh, this is an invalid operation. I'm pretty sure you might have already guessed this one. If I try to save this one, it's not going to work. And even if I go into the previous syntax of converting that integer, then I'm losing the precision. So anything that is like 4.5, I go ahead and save this one. I'm losing my precision and 4.5. Imagine if this would be in crores. So 4.5 crores and the 0.5 will be just not gonna be in consideration. So that is really bad. So you get the idea that this is not a valid syntax. So we're gonna just go ahead and comment this out that yeah, this is really, really bad. Okay, now let's go ahead and say that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just print out and I'm gonna just comment this one all together. I'm not gonna remove anything because there might be some people who might want to use these exercise files. So I'm not gonna do that. Now coming up to the interesting part of this entire uh, video, which is how to have random number. This is where go actually goes very precisely and it treats random number into two separate categories. One, the random number generated by the math itself, which can be repeated in itself because the algorithm is not as superior as some other concepts. And there is a separate category which is known as generating random number by cryptography algorithm, which gives more surety about the random number is going to be purely random and through governed by a really good algorithm. So, Let's go ahead and figure out that how we can generate the random number and we are going to take help of the packages. So let's go into the packages and I'm looking forward that how I can generate a random number. So let's go ahead and type just the random and you can see there are math.rand or math slash rand and there is a crypto slash rand. So let's go ahead and open both of them and see that how we can generate the random number via both ways. So into the functions of this uh, math rand, you can see that we have a lot of options, but one interestingly is int n. Now this int n, as you can see, it returns an integer, non-negative pseudo random number. Uh, again, you don't need to know anything else apart from 
uh, this last line which says it panics if the number is less than zero. Notice I told you in the previous video, we want if we want to exit any program, we have to use this panic. Okay, so not a big deal. I can use this built-in function int n and it is going to give me a random integer. So I, it requires a parameter to be passed on as integer and it returns me an integer. Pretty simple, nice and easy. Let's go into the cryptography as well and go ahead and see the function here. And here we can see there are not too much going on in here. Surely prime numbers are there. Uh, it's cryptography, of course, it has to have. But here in the intent, it says, ah, this is a little bit different. You have to have a random from IO reader, and then you have to have something like max, big int, and something, and it returns us an errors. And it is complex. It is cryptography. It has to be complex on that. But let me bring you back onto this mad.random. It says, hey, int n, use this. You'll get an integer, a random number. That sounds easy. Let's go ahead and move on and try that if we can get these random numbers. So I'll directly just want to print these random numbers. So let's go ahead and use that. I'll use a rand and the package is random from math. I don't need to say math.rand. something. I can just use a dot rand and Golang will handle the rest of the things for me. I want to use int int n, the number, and let's just say I want to give you a 5 here. Now remember one thing, in the modern languages like Python, Golang, the range is always exclusive. So whatever the number you're passing, that number will never appear. It starts from 0 till the range that you're hitting it. Okay, that is fine. If I save this one, the rand is gone because it has imported math.random or math slash random package for me. Cool. So I sh I'm expecting that I'm getting a random number between 0 and 4 every single time. Let's go ahead and see that, if how true that is, because that might surprise you. Okay, so we get one. Let's try it one more time. And okay, there might be some cases that you eventually get the random number one, and you get one again. And no matter how many times you get it, how is it random? It's always giving me one. And this is the most uh, gotcha moment into the entire Golang, because it, it gets a lot of people crazy. The reason why it works this way is because every single random number you generate, there is nothing random in the computer. Everything is driven by algorithm. Some programs, some methods, some algorithm written by somebody. And these algorithms are run by the seed itself. So you have to go ahead and say rand.seed, which is of course public. And you have to provide some random values here. For example, you can provide 30 or something. And now obviously it will give me a little bit different result. If I go ahead and say, it says, okay, three. But since the seed is same, the algorithm is going to flow through that seed, it will always give me 3. If I go ahead and change from 30 to 302 or something, anything random as a seed, now the program will change up here and will say, okay, it happened to give me 3 again, so I need to change it a little bit more drastically different. Let's go for 7, maybe. It might give me something else or maybe give me same. You get the idea. So entire algorithm is being driven by the seed itself. So what you can do actually to make sure that this seed always is random. One of the things which keep on changing, no matter what you do, is time. So let's use a little bit time. Don't worry, we have a separate video, next video dedicated on the time itself. But as of now, I can just use a time dot now, public, so n is capital. And to make it a little bit more on that, I'm gonna use a dot syntax, and don't worry, we'll discuss this a little bit in detail uh, next. So we're going to go ahead and say time dot nano like that. And as I save this, it will import the time package for me. And now it is much more guaranteed that the seed is being initialized by a truly random number every single time. And I'm expected to get me this random int all the time good. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. It gives me four, it gives me two, and it gives me zero and all of that. But our job is not yet solved because it gives me from zero to five, uh, I want one to six. So pretty easy. I want to just go ahead and add that. This also proves that it gives you an integer back. Remember in the definition, while studying the documentation, we got that it gives me the integer. So adding just one here, no problem at all. I don't have to do the conversion. And this is the advantage that you get when you read the documentation. Okay, this is all good. This is all great so far. Okay, this is the time when you want to generate a random number, but you are not too much worried about the cryptography uh, accurateness or something like that. Moving back, this is all what we have studied and I'm pretty sure you can use other examples up here and all of that. Although the example is just the seed, it doesn't give us a whole lot of details up here, but it is good. 
And we have a lot, lot of other things. We will be definitely coming back onto this exercise files one more time, but it's time that we want to generate a random number through cryptography as well. So how are we gonna do that? It is a little bit tricky, but let's go ahead and try this out. The first thing uh, that we have to do is actually comment this out because this time I don't want an import package from the math. I want to be from crypto. Let's go ahead and bring that manually, otherwise it will give me a problem. So I'll say that I want to bring in a package from crypto, yeah, crypto, and then I want to bring in rand. So now the random is coming up from crypto. So this all, these all guys, nah, they are not gonna work. Let's go ahead and comment this out and move on to this. This is random from crypto. Okay, I'll just show you how to generate that because I don't want to go too much in depth of uh, cryptography as of now, but maybe, maybe in some video. Okay, let's go ahead and store this into a variable. We have to because, remember, we read the definition just here. It gives us an integer as well as it might give us an error. So we need to handle two objects here. So obviously, uh, the comma OK syntax is going to be uh, here. So I'm going to call this one as my random number, if I can write that, odd num. And obviously, I'll have an underscore because I'm not worried about the error that it's thrown at, but I need to be checking it in the ideal case. Okay, now again, the same thing, I'm using the random package, but from cryptography this time, and it has just int, not int n, and there we go. Now it says, okay, you need to have a big max int and a big max int and error and all of that. Okay, how does it work like that? So this actually gives you a reader itself, so you have to say rand.reader. This is again coming up from the cryptography package itself, and in the second parameter, you have to use this syntax again, big, yes, another package that kicks in, and then you have to say new int, and then inside you can provide five, which is up till from zero to five, I want to get a number. And again, this is not something I'm making it up. Notice here, a big int, in case you want to have a big, something like this, you need to import the library or, or the package big up here. So this is what it is expected. And again, notice here it says IO reader. This is coming up from RAND reader. So this is how you go ahead and get it. I know this is too much to handle, but there we go. Now in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just say fumped, and I'm gonna say my random number. Let's go ahead and save this and try to run this that what we get up here. So we get one here, we get zero here, we get four here, which is two. So this is moreover like getting a random number every single time, but since it is governed by cryptography, the randomness is much more accurate, much more reliable. But again, in all the packages, you don't want to do, go ahead and import the crypto. You might go, uh, go get away just by having a random seed like this syntax. And by the way, there are a lot more seeders, way to seed the seeder, so we'll come back onto this one. Okay, so quite a lot about math, and uh, make sure you read uh, both of these packages a little bit more, explore them a little bit more, or if there's something interesting that you find up, let me know in the comment section. It would be great for community itself. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.